Hi everyone, we are discussing fillers today. My goal with this video is to have you understand the general idea of what fillers can do in addition to sort of the obvious of what everyone knows that you can get your lips enlarged for example, but what else are fillers used for? What can they do and what you need to look for or avoid when looking for an injector? If this subject is something that you find interesting, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing. Feel free to share with your friends and let's talk about fillers. So the fillers I want to discuss today are the hyaluronic acid fillers. Um, there are other products under the filler category um, that are non-dissolvable. Some of them are literally little microscopic beads of plastic. And then there's another category of fillers called biostimulators, which essentially stimulate your body to produce its own collagen. So what we're gonna talk today about are the hyaluronic acid fillers. This is a group of fillers. They're all made from hyaluronic acid and they are all dissolvable. So if you don't like it or something goes wrong, they can be completely dissolved. Overall, the brand names you may be familiar with include Restylane and Juvederm and the newest one, the newest edition, are the RHA fillers by a company called Revance, and that was a subscriber request to talk about the RHA fillers. So I will break them down. First, we're gonna talk about what, why there are so many fillers. So I have a great little chart that I'm going to show you, and I don't know how well this shows, so I'll, I'll zoom this up, but basically it's a, it's a curve that goes this way. And so what I wanna help you understand is the fillers that exist or would exist on each side of the spectrum. So the firmest fillers you can think of as, honestly, the best example I can think of would be like a cube of raw steak. Maybe not a great comparison, but it really kind of is because if you think about a cube of raw steak, in a way it's squishy, but it's absolutely not stretchy. You absolutely can't stretch steak. And even though it's kind of squishy, it always hold, it holds its shape and its form. So those would be the firmest fillers like Voluma or Restylane or Restylane Lift. Those types of fillers are used deep on the bone to replace volume loss, either for the purpose of replacing the loss of bone or deep fat pads. So essentially as we age, when we lose bone and fat pads, we are revolumizing the volume we've lost. Then if you, so that would be sort of at the top here. If you're close to these, this y-axis, but you drop down, you'd have something that's also absolutely not stretchy or squishy and no bounciness to it, but it would be much, much softer, almost like room temperature butter. And the fillers you'd find in this category would be more products like Volbella from Juvederm. And as we slowly move down the chart over to the other side, we get into very, very stretchy products. So these are products that would be injected just underneath the skin, maybe to soften a line, maybe to soften a dimple. It's really, um, more of a sort of instead of building structure it's more of a frosting and a smoothing purpose and there's a lot of stretch so good examples of these if in real life would be if you imagine a raw egg yolk no a raw egg white it's kind of slimy and it's very stretchy and you can pull it apart and it it'll come back together. So if you imagine something like that, they're very watery, but they but they do hold a stretch to them. And then in, hypothetically, it doesn't exist. What would exist on the other side, but up high, would be something that's very firm and very stretchy. 
which would kind of be like, was it Silly Putty? Silly Putty is kind of like that, but that has no purpose in the face where you want something really firm and stretchy. So if you notice, this is blank because there's there are no products with those properties. So those are those corners that we've described are sort of the extremes. And within that, we have various different products that vary in terms of that stretch and that rigidity for different purposes. If we're addressing uh, under eyes versus lips, we want different properties. Now, in terms of the RHA fillers, which is a specific subscriber question, the RHA fillers are a newer family of fillers and they are the, they resemble natural human hyaluronic acid the closest. And in the trials that uh, Revance did with their RHA fillers, they found that they outlast the um, Restylane and the Juvederm products. Although some injectors I've spoken to don't necessarily have share that experience or have that experience, but that is uh, what's published out there in the data. So I hope that makes sense and now you understand why um, it's not as simple as going and getting one syringe and a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here because we want different properties in different parts of our face. So that brings me to choosing an injector. One of the things that you want to make sure when you're choosing an injector is that they do have a nice variety and selection of products because if they literally have one product that they inject everywhere, then they don't really understand the science of the fluidity and rigidity of fillers, which is called rheology. That's that this is rheology. Um, if you don't understand it, you might think that one filler will do the job for every location. But logically, if you just think about it, if you have certain products that are supposed to replace bone or deep fat pads and give you structure, um, that wouldn't be something that you'd want in soft lips. So it's just intuitive that there have to be different products for different purposes. So I would say that's one tip. Make sure your injector has a spectrum of products. And another one to look for is in the consultation. So hyaluronic acids uh, fillers essentially have two purposes. One that I've mentioned is to try to restore what has been lost. And the other one is to give features that may not be there naturally. So for example, to create a larger lip, to create a sharper cheekbone, to create a more prominent chin or sharper jawline. So those may be features that someone might be very young in their 20s um, that they just don't naturally have, so they want to augment that by getting fillers. So that would be the second purpose for fillers. However, when you're going for an evaluation and your goal is to restore volume and sort of bring back the more youthful version of you, there's one sort of, it's a very general rule and all rules are made to be broken. And obviously this isn't always the case, but generally speaking, if you're restoring, most people will create a plan for you or provider, the doctor or the nurse practitioner or PA, they will aim, start up high. They want to fill everything up high because as you fill up high, the whatever has fallen lifts a little bit. So generally when injecting, you want to choose um, areas from high to low and from outer face to inner face. So in other words, if you are interested in correcting, let's say the medial cheek area, but actually you need volume here and you need volume here, if these two areas get corrected first, you may not have anything to fill here and you may not need the correction. So someone who doesn't look at you in a sort of holistic global way and they just will do that one area that bothers you, if they don't even offer you the suggestion that perhaps it could be 
you know, another area could be responsible for that, then you might want to wonder or ask them some questions to see if they are really looking at you and taking every part of your aging process and your natural uh, bone structure and facial structure into account when making the treatment plan. The last challenge I would say is the price point. If someone can't afford the entire treatment that's suggested and half the treatment is done, in, let's say there's a compromise, three syringes were recommended and only one syringe was purchased and used, the patient may not be satisfied with the results. And so you have to think about whether it's baby steps to get to a goal that you're aiming for or whether that's actually the final result that you're not satisfied with. Because oftentimes when you only do half the, the work, you don't have the final result. And so you may be dissatisfied. So it's important to just keep that in the back of your mind that um, if, if budget is your limiting factor, it may take a while to get the desired results. So really briefly, if you're interested in the rundown and the viscosity and the rheology of certain fillers, I'll give you a really quick breakdown. When providing structure and volumization on the deeper level, uh, the firmest fillers that hold shape would be Voluma, uh, Restylane L, Restylane Lift, and the firmest from the RHA fillers would be the number four one. Then when you get into more softer products, for example, um, softer but with structure, that would be Define, um, Restylane Define, which still has a lot of firmness to it. And then Contour is a little softer and Kiss is even softer, so that's designed for lips. But that is designed for lips and shaping. If you want your lips to just be a little plumper, but you don't necessarily want to add shape or form to your lips, then you might choose something that's really, really soft and stretchy. And the options here would be more of an RHA2, which is very fluidy and watery, and also Volbella is good for that, and Restyl and Refine, very soft product. Volbella isn't as stretchy, but it is very soft and squishy. So it's often referred to as a hydrating, plumping type of filler. And another one in the soft and stretchy category from Juvederm is the Juvederm Ultra. That one is also very easy to work with and it has very soft and subtle effects. And I'll just mention one last little fact. If you've ever had filler, particularly under the eyes, and you've noticed a bluish discoloration, that is filler showing through. So you can actually go and get that resolved or dissolved with uh, hyaluronidase, which is an enzyme that exists in a vial that is purchased, but also our body makes it. It's what we our bodies use to break down hyaluronidase hyaluronic acid. So if you get a filler you don't like, it's easy to just inject that area and melt the filler away. Um, and the blue tint is caused by too much of the product reflecting light and being too superficial under the skin. So if the filler is really superficial and in a large bolus or clump, it can reflect light. And not only under the eye, if that's if that happens anywhere on the face, it can be in the nasolabial folds anywhere. If you notice a bluish tint, you can have that dissolved. I hope I've answered all of the uh, dermal filler questions that you guys had. If I missed anything, please uh, leave me a comment and I will answer you directly. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.